How to negotiate with overseas suppliers. This is something that took me a long time to get down. And when I was starting out, a newbie mistake that I would make is actually going back and forth, reaching out to all of these suppliers via email. Now, if you don't know, in China, there's a time difference of about 12 hours to be exact and a huge language barrier. So something that's gonna help you reach more suppliers quickly and get better responses is by creating a template. Now, all the AMZ Formula members have a template, but if you're not in the AMZ Formula, you can create your own template. And the, the layout's pretty simple, right? So up at the top, we'll put our logo, and then we'll actually write out the specifications of what we're looking for. What is the product? How should it look? What size is it? What quantity is it, right? What bundles, so on and so forth. And what we're doing is now we're able to copy paste this and send it out and rapid deploy it to all these different suppliers versus going back and forth, right? Another thing that I'll tell you guys is to keep everything specific and keep everything separate. So something again that I learned the hard way through trial and error is I would have this all coming into my inbox with, you know, emails from my team and my family and promotional and all this other stuff. So what we utilize is a specific email or a separate email. Now you don't need to go and buy a, you know, a professional email. You can just create a Gmail, but I highly recommend that you have a separate email for when you're outsourcing or you're responding to suppliers. That way you can create folders for different ASINs or different products. So you can keep everything organized. This is going to help you out drastic. Now, another thing that I'll tell you guys is, and this is something, again, I messed up. And you guys are going to hear a lot of my mistakes because I want you guys to learn from my mistakes so you don't replicate them or duplicate them, right? And a big mistake that I made was trying to make all my money on the front end. See, one of my mentors told me this when I was starting out, that amateurs monetize the front end and experts monetize the back end. So let me explain. When I was reaching out to suppliers and sourcing products, I would try to beat them to death on the front end pre-manufacturing to make as much as possible. And my whole methodology was if I can get the product's cost lower, well then I'd make more money on the back end, right? I have higher margin, it makes sense. But I want you to understand, and this is something that one of my suppliers that I developed a really good relationship with that I've been working with for the last several years told me. She said, Josh, I want you to understand, we want you to be happy, we want you to get the cost that you want, but I want you to understand outside of what we need as a company in reference to dollar amount for our product and our manufacturing and so on and so forth, um, the price difference is not coming from our margin or how much we make. And that really like blew my mind and I really started thinking, okay, if when I'm negotiating and the price difference isn't coming from the amount of money that the manufacturer is making, well, where is it coming from? And there's this old saying that you get what you pay for, well, with manufacturing, that is 110% true. So that was a mistake that I made. One of my first products was a dual port um, car charger. It was a USB car charger back in 2015. And I lost my rear end horribly because I got bad reviews. I got returns. I had tons of product that was uh, malfunctioned and it wasn't working properly because I was so focused on driving that product cost down. So an acronym that I want you guys to think about is WWAD, and that stands for what would Apple do? Now I tell a lot of my mentees and my clients and members and people I'm talking to, to mimic what works, right? Apple is one of the highest purchased electronic consumer uh, product companies in the world. And guess what? They're 100, 200% higher than all of their competitors in pricing. Why can they get that without resistance? The quality of the packaging, the quality of the products, the customer buying experience, the customer experience, the customer service, and I can go on and on. So when you want to negotiate and reach, to, reach out to your supplier, of course you want to negotiate, but you don't want to haggle. I actually tried to pay more and ask them, what can we do to make this product better? Because a lot of these products and a lot of these manufacturers are operating off penny margin. So I'd rather invest more into my product, make it the best in the marketplace and charge more on the consumer side. So that's something that took me many years of trial and error and sourcing hundreds and hundreds of SKUs and thousands of products to really identify these few three things that I'm telling you guys. And this is gonna help you guys save money. This is gonna help you guys um, reach out to more suppliers. This is gonna help you have a good product, right? And another thing that I'll tell you guys is when you're reaching out to these suppliers, um, don't fall into the marketing trick, right? A marketing trick that a lot of these suppliers do is they will create dummy companies or shell companies and they'll go on Alibaba and they'll post the same uh, products with different images and different company names, but they're the same company. 
And for any of you guys in the B2B space, um, this is big in Craigslist. A lot of people do this, different number, different pictures, but it's the same contractor, right? Or the same um, service-based provider. So something is you wanna make sure that you're cross-referencing the actual company information, um, the address, so on and so forth, to see if it's the same company, because they'll give you different prices because they're trying to make as much as possible. Another thing is there's a lot of trading companies out there. I like to go with manufacturers. Now, how do you tell the difference between a manufacturer and a trading company? Manufacturers actually manufacture and facilitate the product. They don't go through middlemen. What they will do is find you the product and then tack on a little bit of money, make the difference and the customer support, the communication, and sometimes the quality is all going to be neglected. So those are a few tips that are going to help you out big time when it comes to reaching out to suppliers and negotiation. Check out more videos on my YouTube channel at Joshua Crisp on YouTube. There's over a hundred plus videos similar to this in all around entrepreneurship. And for 50% off all services as well as softwares that AMZ Hunter offers, make sure you check out www.amzhunter.com and use promo code HUNTER50.